Hey guys, Jason here. Look at this derelict Cessna 310 at Waco Airport. Boy, it breaks my heart. There's just so many 310s out there that people aren't taking care of or they can't afford anymore. On that note, I just got back from the Twin Cessna Flyer Type Club seminar on uh, Twin Cessna systems. So they do two two-day seminars two or three times a year. Uh, there's a two-day seminar on systems, so that'd be mainly the airframe and associated systems on the plane. And then a two-day seminar on the engines. I didn't have time to do the engine seminar this year, so I just did the system seminar. Anyway, I'm not gonna actually sit here and tell you what I learned because you should pay good money to join your type club. And if you're interested in a twin Cessna, you should pay money to join our type club and pay money to go to these seminars. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you every single thing I learned, but what I am gonna share with you are some of the kind of non-technical things I learned, just the, observ the musings, if you will, the observations and conversations I have with my fellow twin Cessna owners. I think you're gonna find some of this really interesting and enlightening. So first of all, uh, these are not official numbers. These are my get best guesses, but Number one, I think the demographic of the average twin Cessna owner is about, is male mainly, and about an average age of 60. About a third of the guys there were mechanics because it was uh, hosted by Ram Aircraft and we had a couple mechanics from Hawaii that flew in. Another third, roughly, again, this is a straw poll, were Cessna 310 owners and another third were 400 series Cessna owners and operators. I thought, thought this was interesting. We had three guys looking for Q model 310s and all of them complained that they couldn't find anything. They've been looking for, some. one guy's been looking for a year and a half, I think I overheard. And I just said, that's just junk on the market. At any given time, there's only two or three Q models for sale and there's just nothing out there, so. And Honestly, my impression from talking to other people, uh, number four here, is most twin Cessnas are junk now. I mean, it's sad that I have to show you that derelict 310 sitting on the ramp at Waco, but that's just the reality is there's a lot of 310s sitting out there uh, just corroding away. And therefore, the uh, you know, if you're in the market for a twin Cessna for a 310, they're just you know, there's not many really good, well-used flying examples out there that are for sale. And I'll more on that in a minute. I learned why that. Um, number five, corrosion's killing the fleet. I'm the, the um, presenter at this uh, seminar who's a twin Cessna guru. He said that the number one reason why airframes are being junked right now is just corrosion, just catastrophic corrosion. The other thing that I kind of, number six, the other thing I kind of already knew, but, um, you know, you kind of realize when, when you look into these airplanes and the parts prices and the systems, that these are really $1 million airplanes. You can go out and buy a 310 for $100,000, $120,000, but, you know, you're paying parts prices like this airplane was a $1 million airplane. Um, not to scare you, but there, there are just little bushings and things that are now going for you know, two grand and, and a bolt for 1200 bucks that, you know, so there, there are ways around that, of course. A lot of guys there are all uh, having major wins by going to salvage and getting parts cheaply. So you, if you want to keep the cost of flying a twin Cessna down, you really need to become savvy at uh, finding your own parts. Uh, number seven, not a surprise going back to the demographic, we have aging owners. Um, number eight, all the guys I talked to said that uh, these are mainly 310 guys said this is their last airplane because they're all they're all this aging demographic and uh, you know honestly a lot of them said I think you know by the time I sell my airplane there won't be many people left to buy them so and it's it's kind of scary but I, I do think there'll be a new crop of people out there as they get older and have have the money to run these airplanes. Um, just on a kind of another musing, um, kind of along the same lines, I talked to guys that owned multiple airplanes. A guy next to me had owned a 172, a Piper Lance, a Cessna 210, and he said he loves his 310. He's not going to upgrade beyond a 310. He says he's found his perfect airplane. 
And I agree, I've, I, these, these are amazing machines and I don't think if you've ever been in one, you realize what an amazing airplane they are. So don't be put off by the cost of operating these. If you need a serious cross country hauling machine, you'll never look back if you buy one of these airplanes. Some technical things I learned specifically, again, I'm not gonna go into the 310 itself and some of the technical aspects you need to pay attention to. You should do, again, do the seminar if you're a 310 owner or a prospective 310 owner, but this applies to any GA aircraft owner. First of all, this stuff, LPS2, you should have a can of this in your hangar. This stuff is great. You should be going around, uh, assuming it fits with what your maintenance manual says, you should be going around and lubricating hinges, door hinges, aileron hinges, bearings, if they need to be lubricated. Again, check your maintenance manual. But uh, I learned in this seminar that people just aren't keeping their airplane lubricated. And if you're gonna say, oh, well, that should be done during the annual, I guarantee you, I bet half the airplanes that go in for annual, the mechanics do not lubricate what they need to lubricate. So again, keep a can of LPS2, you can get this at Aircraft Spruce or Sporties or anywhere. Get this stuff and go around every couple months and lubricate everything. Second thing I learned, this was a surprise to me, the simple green that you get at Walmart, if you're using that to clean your belly of your airplane, apparently, according to the twin Cessna guru, uh, at this seminar is corrosive to aluminum. So he said you should be buying Simple Green through like Air, uh, Aircraft Spruce and Specialty. That's a different formulation. So just buyer beware, the stuff you get at Walmart apparently can corrode aluminum. So that was, that was news to me. And then finally, the third technical thing that I learned that I'm gonna share with you is if you have uh, like gill batteries, wet cell batteries, specifically gills, check the water off. And uh, somebody was saying at the seminar, they maintained a fleet of rental airplanes, and especially in the summer when it's hot, that um, you know, the batteries would need water you know, every, every week. So, um, and I have gill batteries, I have G20, two G25s in my 310. So again, these apply to anybody that um, owns any kind of GA aircraft. So those are some of the things I learned. So I hope you guys found this video interesting and useful. As I mentioned, the seminar was at Ram Aircraft in Waco, Texas. So as you know, they rebuild uh, Continental aircraft engines for mainly twin Cessnas, but also some other uh, aircraft like the 210 and the Baron. And one of the neat things about the seminar is there was a, a TSIO 520 engine that was um, had cutaways. So I guess part of the case was opened up so you could see in and there were cylinders that were cut in half and whatnot as you can see here and so just as a teaser i am going to do another video here in the next week or two where i'm going to cobble that footage together and kind of narrate through um, what you could see inside that engine so it, that was really um, a really neat thing to be able to see anyway happy flying more videos soon take care guys